Well, it's very impressive. Obviously, I heard there's one which is just broke ground on, on the Wirral, where I live, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, when I was asked to, to get involved with one on the Wirral, um, I decided that I wanted to come up to see what it was the end product was going to be like. And I know the one here has been up and running for two years. But um, what I was more interested in seeing is, is, is what is available. Because, of course, you know, when I first came to England as a 13-year-old, I paid for a football, a youth club. And youth clubs were very big. But youth clubs in the old days, and I suppose as they are now, really provide opportunities if you want to play football or table tennis or, you know. But if you're not sporty, you don't play football, you don't play table tennis, what else is there to do for young kids? Particularly in this day and age whereby, I suppose, when I was young, you could walk the streets till 1 o'clock in the morning and it was safe and, you know, your parents knew that nothing was going to happen to you. Whereas you can see in the last, you know, 10, 15 years that young people have to be given opportunities, they've got to be given something to do. So it's interesting to come and see what they actually provided. And it really has blown my mind because, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're a sportsman or not a sportsman, a boy or a girl, all kids have a talent to do something. And the varied opportunities and the varied projects that they have running here really can, can, can suit everybody. So uh, also having seven children, I understand how important it is for, for young children to be provided for, not just from a from the point of view of what your parents offer, but what society has to offer you, what you know your your local area has to offer. And the fact that it's very central and they seem to all of the ones which are going to be open, the one in the world, the one here, the one in Bolton, are very central, easily accessible, and it has something for everyone. Um, so, you know, I'm really impressed with that. I think that if you look at what the, the, the theme and the template of the youth zones are going to be similar, obviously because of size and because of constraints and geographically, they may differ slightly, but in terms of the, 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 the general layout um, of all of them, as much as I think they're seven or eight now and they're hoping to get another 20 and another 100, obviously, in, in, in future years, I think generally speaking it's going to be the same, which is good because I think that rather than depending on the area, either being given better or worse or not as big or not as good that's not what it's about it's about you know trying to maximize the not just the potential of the kids but in terms of giving them the the, the same space the same equipment um, which is important because it is really is top of the range stuff I mean if the gym downstairs for example is better than David Lloyd <laughs> you know and and if you look at the the, the football facilities and, and the boxing gym and everything that they have it's really giving them no excuse to fail. I've been living in the world for 30 years. And all of the, all of the, and as much as when you talk about inner cities, you think about London and Manchester, big cities, but you know, when I say inner cities, I mean, even towns, I mean, inner city, if you know what I mean. And because of the facilities that, that aren't there for young, for young um, people. And not only the facilities that aren't there, the varied facilities and the varied experiences that they go through by coming to a place like the youth zone is what it needs. Because um, just from what I've heard about this particular area, with its location to the to the to the town centre and the fact that it was just one big park, whereby I suppose and it happens all over all over the world, never mind all over the country, whereby once you have kids with nothing to do, just gathering around in the town centres, whereby you know there's alcohol, there's drugs, and there's nothing to do. We can see from an antisocial behaviour point of view why they have the problems that they actually have. Whereas if a facility can be provided in those areas, um, that will, even just from the point of view, and it's not just the point of view of talking about antisocial behaviour, it's also giving them something, not only something to do, but something to aspire to, and something whereby they, they can see that they can actually go on from an educational point of view, from a vocational point of view, getting jobs and businesses getting involved also with the youth centre in terms of the follow-on of when you leave here you can have a job. Um, I think that from that point of view it really will inspire youngsters. Why I'm really back in this project is because I've, you know, since I've retired from football I've been going, I work 20 times here in Africa and I've been travelling around with lots of different charities and seeing how um, not just not just the, the, the children and facilities and the opportunities that they have in Africa and in Southeast Asia and the empowerment that children need because I see in those children in Africa who are obviously going through different circumstances I see the same when you look into their eyes I see what I see in my own children and all I see is the opportunity that my children have had that they haven't had and what we tend not to think about are children on our own doorstep because when we talk about charities and disadvantaged children, we think obviously about 
and I do because I've been working in Africa now for many years about children in Africa or Southeast Asia and I've been to Iraq and Afghanistan but in many respects children on our own doorsteps also lack those opportunities so um, in terms of the opportunities that can be given to those children not just in terms of keeping them entertained while they're aged between 12 or 8 and, and 17 but also what you will then see the growth in that particular child to make him the man or the woman that he will become. You've got to hold and give, but do it at the right time. You can be slow or fast, but you must get to the line. They'll always hit you and hurt you. Defend and attack. There's always one way to beat them. Get round the back. So catch me if you can, because I'm the England man. And what you're looking at is a master plan. We ain't no hooligans. This ain't a football song. Three lions on my chest. I know you. We're playing for England.